Hi everyone, it's Fiona here from the UK Spectrum Noir Design Team. So after chatting to you guys yesterday on the group Facebook page, I've gone ahead and put together a little video showing you five different techniques for colouring in the new Gemini window dies that are launching on HSN on June the 8th. And these are all super simple techniques and they are by no means the only ways to use these dies, but it's a good place to start if you need some ideas. So today in this video I'm going to be using the single lily die. It means you can see all the different techniques on the same die and see how they all come out. And these are the five techniques here. There's some alcohol inks, that's the markers on acetate with glitter cardstock. We have more alcohol inks on white cardstock. We've got some distress ink background. And we have two different kinds of Nouveau drops here. We have one made with an enamel look and one made with a glass look. So let's get started. So this first one that I'm going to be doing is using acetate. Now you have to remember that the acetate that comes in your packs has got a film on it. It's very thin. You just peel it off and then it'll be fine to stick down. If you don't take it off and you try to put Nouveau drops or alcohol markers on top of it, then it won't work as well. So don't forget to take that off. Now we're going to go ahead and start working here with the Nouveau jewel drops, not the crystal drops. The Nouveau jewel drops are the ones that give you the really nice translucent look. So you get a really cool effect of kind of glass, like you can see through it. It's really, really pretty. You'll see what I mean when it's all done. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in here and then get started. So to fill these gaps in with the Nouveau drops, what you want to do is apply just a little bit of pressure. Make sure the gel keeps coming out in a steady stream, but you don't want to go overboard. These are only small dies in terms of height, so you don't have to fill them in with an awful lot of the drops. Put too much in and it might creep over into another area and you don't want to get your colours mixed. So I'm going to go ahead here and fill this one in. And then I'm going to do the leaves on the other side. So the colour I'm using just now is called Key Lime. And it's a really pretty colour, I really like this green. Green's my favourite colour anyway, but this one's really nice. So you should be able to see now that it's starting to build up a kind of glass like effect and what's really nice about these is that it doesn't although it'll settle down and become a bit flatter it doesn't ever go completely flat the gel will set with some kind of texture to them and that makes it really nice it's like a rippled glass look oh, there's somebody at my door <laughs> sorry about that if you can hear the doorbell in the background So just finishing off this one here and then we're going to move on and start applying some colour into the middle of the, the flower, the middle of the lily. Just give you a wee close up look of it there, you start to see it, quite pretty, you have to be super careful not to touch it though. If you touch it with your fingers, guaranteed it'll end up smudging everywhere. And I've just realised I haven't done the stalk yet either, so I need to get that done. Just fill that in. So now that the stem's done as well, I'm going to use this colour and move on to doing the actual flower. this colour is kind of hard to see just now, it's the Cocoa Blush and it looks like it's almost a kind of chocolate brown colour I suppose, maybe? It actually doesn't dry like that, it dries with um, a kind of pinkish tinge, it looks really pretty. So that's done and now I'm going to put some blue around the edges. So this one is Aqua Plains. Now, you can obviously choose whichever colours you really like when you're doing these. 
Um, I find that if you put too many bright colours next to each other, then sometimes you can kind of lose the impact of the picture. So because I really like this lily and I want it to stand out, I'm keeping some of the colours round about it quite muted, and especially the ones that are right next to it. So when I fill it in with another blue later, you'll see shortly, I'll fill it in with another blue colour. I want that to stay quite toned down as well. But then what you can do is you can layer your dye when it's dried, obviously. <laughs> Don't be trying to layer it down when it's still wet. You can layer it onto card when it's dry and choose whichever colour cardstock you like behind it. So the white really picks up the colours. Black's really good behind the Nuva Drops as well. That gives it a really good sheen. Metallics are lovely behind it. Or if you want, you can use it in an aperture of a card. One of the examples that I'd posted, um, Let There Be Peace, that card that I posted on the Facebook page, um, that shows really well what it looks like when you've got an aperture behind it. So the colour I'm using for this one now is Sea Breeze and I'm just filling in all around it. And there you have it. So if I pick it up and let you have a good look. Right, moving on very quickly, we're going to do exactly the same thing again. I've already taken off my film and stuck it to the acetate, but this time we're going to use the Nouveau Drops that are crystal ones, so you're going to get more of an enameled effect. The enamel drops are a little bit harder to work with because, well, that's not strictly true. They work the same way, but they're not as forgiving. If you make a mistake or you drop a bit into the wrong area, they will stand out quite, quite harshly. So you do have to be much more careful with these because the colours are so much brighter. That's what, probably one of the reasons why I like the translucent ones so much, because I'm actually a really messy crafter. So I tend to get them all over the place. This is me being quite neat for a change. <laughs> so I'm just filling this in with a really lovely colour. This is one of my favourite colours. It's called Rhubarb Crumble. And I absolutely love this colour. I use it for just about everything. And then I'm going to go ahead and in the centre there, just to give it a little bit of dimension, I'm using the Sweet Lilac colour. Now I'm going to do the same with this die cut as I did with the last one with the crystal drop, so with the jewel drops. And I'm going to use more colour on the flower and around the edges. And then right next to the flower, I'm going to keep it toned down, probably just using white, because I really want that lily to stand out. It's such a pretty flower that I don't want it to get hidden in the mass of colour. So this is my all-time absolute favourite Nouveau drop. It's a crystal drop in apple green, and I use it so much, it's ridiculous. I have about three bottles of it. I go through it so, so quickly, I'm always having to stock up on it. But you can see why it's just such a lovely green. It's really bright and vibrant and it really complements this lily. Now don't forget, although you get the black self-adhesive card with the, the packs when you're getting the window dies, you aren't restricted to just using that card. You can use whichever kind of card you like. This black card that comes with it though is good because it's really stiff and very thick as well. So for using techniques like the Nouveau Drops, it gives it a really good border to kind of hold it all together. You definitely want to be using a heavyweight card. So now I'm moving on to Plum Pudding and I'm just going to go around the edges with this. It gives it a really nice kind of border. And you can probably see by now that it's getting a really nice gloss effect. So it's similar to the, the jewel drops and that translucent effect, except that it's obviously solid colour. But you get that really nice kind of glossy shine to it.
okay almost finished and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the middle and as I said before the parts next to the lily I'm going to fill in with white so the white nouveau drop is just called simply white and it really is very very bright it's absolutely lovely One thing you have to remember when you're doing this technique is you have to make sure that your black cardstock or whichever cardstock you're using is firmly stuck down. If you have got any gaps underneath it at all and you put too, many, too much of the Nouveau drop into it, then it can seep underneath and it can start to lift the card. So make sure it's really well stuck down before you start using this. just a little bit left to go and do remember as well that this takes quite some time to dry even when you've got just the little drops that you would use on a card it can take 24 to 48 hours to dry so if you're using this amount of it together it's going to have to obviously take a little bit longer because it's quite thick I'm just tidying up a few edges there I really am very messy. You can see bits where I've kind of gone over the edge already. Okay, and there we have it. So that is sample number two. Okay, moving on, this is another technique that I have so much fun with, and I'm going to be using a distress ink technique. So starting with a piece of cardstock, it's not cut down to size, and I'm using the Harmony by Spectrum Noir water reactive dies, so that you can play around with them afterwards. I'm just showing you the colour tape, grasshopper and pine tree. Now the cardstock I've got is slightly textured. It's like almost like a kind of linen effect because I want to make sure that the background to the card isn't really plain so you'll see that as I start blending you'll get to see a lot of that texture coming through now I like using these blending brushes but you can use whichever tool you have I have the um, round one inch um, blending tools from Spectrum Noir as well they are really good unfortunately I've run out of pads which is why I'm not using them in this video um, I need to stock up on some more of them but they work really well as well so I'm just going to build the color up I don't want to apply it too heavily to start with and I also don't want it to be uniform because it, this is going to be the whole focal point behind the die I really want to make sure that the colour itself gives a bit of contrast because I'm not planning to do much else with this one. So you can see some of that lovely linen texture coming through there. To be fair, it does make blending a little bit trickier, so you have to work a bit longer on it, but it will all come together in the end. So after a bit more blending, we're starting to get the colours coming together and you can really see that lovely texture now as well. If you wanted a smoother finish and you didn't want it to look quite so grainy, then the Crafter's Companion Stamping Card is really good for blending on. That will give you a much smoother look and you don't have to worry about it looking quite so patchy. You do get rid of the patches by carrying on blending, but it does just take a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm nearly happy with this. But of course, once I finish doing all this, I'm just going to go ahead and ruin it by pouring some water all over it. <laughs> So taking a clean brush, 
clean water I'm just going to drop some splatters all over it and you can see it's starting to work there I absolutely love the way it does this it's like a little raindrop effect it's really cool get rid of the excess there now, although it's quite dry and you can touch it and everything just now if you're going to be sticking the self-adhesive card to it from the die cut you really want to make sure that it's completely dry so I'm going to give it a quick blast with my heat tool not too long I don't want it to warp or anything like that but I do want it to be dry enough that the glue will stick properly Now this is another little tip for when you're trying to get these dies to stick because they are very intricate. Rather than just running your hand across the top of them, if you have a brayer like this or a large stamping block or something similar that you can apply a bit more pressure with, then use that because it will really help push it out and, and get it stuck to that card really nicely without moving it at all. So just trimming this one down to size. This would be a really cool technique to use if you then wanted to put like a clear nouveau drop over the top of it and just give it a kind of gloss effect that would look pretty good but i quite like that the way it is take away all my rubbish there okay so there's sample number three so for number four, I'm going to move on to using the alcohol ink markers. And the first technique I'm going to use is just on white cardstock. This is the Crafters Companion stamping card. It's really good for markers. I find it helps them blend really well. So just trim a little bit off there. I obviously didn't cut it down well enough before. Okay, and now to get into colouring. So I'm going to start with the same kind of colours I was using before. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. Okay, so these are the Spectrum Noir Classic pens. I really like these because I like the kind of bullet tip nib that you get on one side of them I find them really easy to work with but the illustrators are also really great for this and the tribe well basically any of the markers would work really well for it now when a lot of people use the markers they like to start with the darker color and then fade into the light I'm a little bit different so if your technique is to start with the dark color first then go right ahead and do that I don't I'm afraid I start with the light color build up to the dark colour and then go over it all over again with the first light colour. It's like shopping for dresses, you know, you find one you like in one shop, you try it on, but then you put it back and you go into 13 more shops until you don't find anything you like and you go back to the first shop. That's what I'm like with alcohol markers. I may also have had too much coffee by now. <laughs> okay, so second colour in, just starting to build up a little bit of depth in colour. I really like these pens and this apple colour is so cool. I think I might have mentioned I quite like greens, did I? I think I did. I know it looks like a hot mess just now but trust me it will look a lot better. I colour like a three year old. a bit more tone and then I'll go back over the whole thing all over again
So back to the chartreuse, which is the first colour I used, and you'll see this card really allows it all to start blending into each other. It's probably one of my favourite cards actually for using with the alcohol ink markers. It's not even meant for alcohol ink markers, but it works perfectly. So moving on to the main part of the lily, and I've just remembered I've still got to do this centre. You could do this yellow as well, it doesn't have to be green too. You could do it any colours you like. I'm just going quite traditional today. Okay, so now moving on to the main part of the lily. And we're going to start with some kind of pinks and lilacs moving into a slightly deeper purple. One of the reasons these dyes, these window dyes, are so cool to colour is because you don't have to worry about going over the lines. Your, your pen kind of bounces off either side of it. So it, it makes you look really professional. <laughs> there are no dodgy bits. I've said that now, I'll probably make a big mess in a minute and really embarrass myself. Okay, so first colour down and now to get some more colour in for a bit of depth. I'm sure there'll be plenty of you out there that can colour way better than I can. So, and I am going pretty fast, to be honest, because this is already a really long video. This is like going to be half an hour, and I don't do videos, so this is a long video for me. Which is also, by the way, why I'm not turning these into cards at the end of them, because otherwise you would all be asleep. And that would be a shame. So, I'm just sticking with doing the dyes, showing you the techniques, and hopefully you'll see lots of inspiration on the 8SN show on the 8th. Okay, and then back to my first colour again, and all over it. <laughs> I don't know many people that colour from the light to dark. I must be one of the only ones. If you colour light to dark as well, be sure to let me know in the comments because I'm I'm feeling like I'm a bit weird with my colouring. So a little bit of duck egg blue. I'm going round the flower and obviously the border as well, a nice bright blue, but I'm going to shade this in with some ice grey. It doesn't quite give the look of a window pane, but it does give it more depth than if you just coloured it all in with one colour. And after all, these dyes are meant to be the focal point of your card, so it's nice to put that little bit of extra effort in, isn't it? So this is my trusty greys going over all the blues just to mute them ever so slightly. This is probably the quickest technique that you can do. And there you go, nice and simple. If you want to add a little bit of sparkle to it, then don't forget about the sparkle overlay pens. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a thin coat just now. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on camera. I'll try and hold it up when I've done it so that you can have a good look, but it can be quite difficult, I think, to catch the light with it. 
but when you see it in person you would see all that nice glitter and it's it's really pretty it also doesn't affect the colouring at all so all that hard work that you've just put in with your alcohol ink markets is still going to stand out just exactly how you've done it Yep, just about done. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell which bits you've already gone over with the sparkle pen. Or maybe that's just me. I want to make sure I haven't missed any bits. Oh, there you go. You should just be able to see a hint of a sparkle there if I just turn it a little bit. And that's die number four. Now, die number five is alcohol ink markers on acetate. Now, don't forget, again, you've got to take that film off because otherwise it won't work. So I nearly forgot. That's me reminding myself to take it off just now. And when it comes to colouring acetate with your alcohol ink markers, you can either colour the front or you can colour the back. It doesn't actually matter which. Obviously, you're going to see the colour anyway. I find it personally much easier to colour from the back. And that's because I can be quite messy. And although the alcohol... <laughs> I think I've already told you that. But although the alcohol ink does dry quite quickly, if you rub it by accident, then it will, you know, it'll remove some colour. So because I'm going to be sticking the back side down, I figure if I colour that side and then glue it to something, I'm less likely to smudge it. At least that's what I tell myself. You also don't have to worry about the lines here. So this is colouring on the back. Now what I tend to do with this, it can be quite fiddly. So I tend to just use the thicker end of the alcohol ink markers and just colour in big blocks at a time. So it, it's, very much, um, it's very much less detailed than some of the others, some of the other techniques. I also find that the thick end of the alcohol ink markers works much better than the thin end. The, nib, the, bullet put, the, the bullet nib just doesn't seem to um, lay the colour down quite as well without it streaking. So using the thick end, you can get a much nicer wash on it. Back with the greens. I feel like I've done every one of these just about the same colour. I'm really sorry about that. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how I've ended up with the same colours on all of them. So you can see if you look really carefully there, you can see where some of the drops are kind of pooling. You don't want to leave them. So you want to kind of spread them out a little bit. So when this is all completely colored in with the alcohol ink markers, I'm gonna show you another little Tick, uh, kind of um, trick to change it up a bit you can obviously leave it like this and quite a lot of us in the design teams have done that so we've colored them in with the alcohol inks and then we've left them just to look like stained glass windows and it is really cool they're lovely like that and you can make all sorts of things out of them that way you can make wind catchers you can make oh you know like little window hangings and things so the sun comes through and picks up all the color it's really cool but there is something else that you can do if you're going to be adding it to a card that just gives it a little bit of extra sparkle. So I'll show you that in a minute. Now, because this is on the acetate and there's no solid colour behind it, you can be quite bold with these colours as well. It's not like going with the translucent Nouveau drops because these are really thin inks. So although it looks really bold just now, when you hold it up, you can actually start to lose some of that colour. So this is about the only time I would say that going bolder with the colours is actually a better technique. That's why I'm sticking this bright blue 
in the middle after telling you <laughs> that I keep using things like white because I want the lily to stand out I thought I'd better explain why I'm now using a really bright color Okay, so just trying to fill in the really thin gaps here. The other downside to using this kind of technique is that if you do leave any white space, it will show up. So you really want to make sure that you've got it all coloured in as well as you can. nearly done and there you have it so of course that's still the back side that we're looking at it from so if I turn it over and you can see it from the front that's what it looks like and that you can see the, the reflection there isn't that pretty it's so cool so what I'm going to show you then to make a little bit of difference is if I just grab a bit of card from over here I just want to show you what it looks like when you've got different colored cardstock behind it. So that's it with the white. If you were putting it on a white card, that's how it would look. You can see that you, you can pick out the kind of brush marks on it. But this is how you stop that. If you put a bit of glitter cardstock behind it, it really picks out the colors. And although I've used the purple, cardstock here you can use any color glitter card you like all it will do is enhance the colors that you have put down with the alcohol inks and it hides all those really pesky streaks so that's kind of helpful too so gluing the acetate to cardstock can be quite difficult because I'm sure if you've tried it yourselves you'll know that gluing things to glitter doesn't always adhere very well so I like to use this colour um, glue it's a very fine glue but it's really tacky and it dries clear and you can also put it on with quite a lot of precision so if you notice here I'm just putting little drops around all the black lines and then when that's ready and I've got a fair amount on I'm going to go ahead and stick it onto the glitter cardstock So I'm just going to grab my brayer again and give it a bit of pressure. You see it hasn't started to dry yet so it's still slipping a little bit but it'll get there. And there you are. If you leave it to dry for a while it will be absolutely fine. And there you have it. That is the last sample. So I hope you've got some inspiration from these. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to find us in the forums and the chat groups. Just, you know, tag us or ask for a DT member to reply to you and one of us will get back to you. And hopefully you'll get loads more inspiration on the show when it comes in a few hours time. See you later, guys.